I think it's funny when these itch store pages list the average play times. Like, Laser Knights was way too much for your average session, and then Sky Rogue was way too short. Then you have today's game, where it says it's about an hour, but for recording this video, I didn't die for a full two hours. I kept wanting for the game to finally kill me so I could show what happens when you die in this game, but it just kept going on and on. Weird flex, but okay. Welcome back to Mummified Games. This is Tony, and today we're gonna to be talking about the roguelike game, Beacon. The story of this game is pretty straightforward. You are the pilot of a ship that crash landed on this planet, and there's no way of fixing it. The pilot goes forward and tries to find some info about this planet, and then dies along the way. This is where the game starts, where you, the player, keep being reborn at this clone pod. It remembers the DNA of the pilot, so it can just make clones over and over. It sounds like an easy way to sort of hand wave why you can just start over and over again in a game. Having a funny story element to explain why you're able to play this game over and over. So you can start the training tutorial level of the game, where it gives you all the buttons you need in this game. Shoot, melee, use your skill item, your special item, dodge roll, you know, that whole thing. Pro Strat, I mapped grenade to my forward mouse side button and the skill button to the back side button. Sort of if you think like throwing a grenade forward, then you don't have to reach your finger all the way from the WASD keys, but I kept Q as a default binding for its action. Simulation training is over and now you get to roll through this game. But this is where the twist comes in. You're running and gunning your way through the world and you're collecting DNA samples, adding them to your collection. So when you're done with the training session and ready to become the first clone in this game, you can apply these DNA strands to your original genome and alter your game stats. Those stats being health, stamina, resistance, speed, luck, and your chance to get a crit. There's a bunch of different types of strands. Base strands make small changes that generally give more than they take. Volatile strands give more, but they take a bigger downside as well. Fortified strands are all good and give you a lot for your trouble. There are paramount strands that alter in-world real stats as well, like your stamina recharge and other things other than the previous stats mentioned before. There are way too many different strands to go through all of them, so you just have to play around and see what they all do. I found that I would add all the fortified strands to my genome slots and they would give great boost to the stats. In the playthrough for this recording, I took one that gave a boost to resistance and stamina. After that, I saw that there was no boost to health, speed, luck, or crit chance. After that, you find other ways to sort of balance your stat bonuses, seeing what you have a lot of and giving up some of it to help raise all the other stats as well. And then finally, I decided to go with a big volatile strand. That would add some resistance, but take away a good chunk of health and some crit chance. Now, you might be thinking, wow, Tony, you did all that work. Now you're gonna throw it all away by letting two stats drop below their base level? What a shame. Ah, but this is where I introduce mods. Mods are on the genome page and they can apply to any strand you want and they will modify certain parts of the strand. I happen to have a mod that allows me to invert the benefits and penalties of a strand. So even though I was giving up a lot of health and gaining some resistance, now that help with a mod, I was gaining a large chunk of health instead. And now that I have this power, I'm going to unleash it on you, Seto Kaiba. Go, Dark Magician, attack his life points directly. Sorry, I, uh, Got a little carried away there. Anyway, when you have everything all figured out, you hit the sequence button and everything starts applying to the next clone. The computer starts sequencing the genome and everything starts applying to the clone. Okay, one, two, three, four, uh, wait a minute. What was that? Mutation detected, what's that? Your spinal cord is tightly net knitted mesh of nerves and wiring working together as well. What is this? This is the final mechanic of the roguelike. Adding and twisting the clone's genome with unknown DNA strands can cause sometimes weird mutations to take over. In my playthrough for this video, I gained the ability to ignore some traps, gain some accuracy, but cost me some serious luck and now I'm stunned by EMP weapons. So that's what happens in this game. You try to get as far as you can in the game, like in any roguelike, and you pick up DNA strands. These modifications to the source code can cause weird mutations, just some wild aesthetic changes. Sometimes it gives you metal feet, a gross body, a new head, an extra arm, a wild variety of things. All this DNA and stat manipulation is all well and good, but it doesn't actually get you to your destination. That destination, of course, finding a way off this planet and back home. The whole world is inhabited by leftover robot workers in this mine 
refinery, factory, something. The levels merge back and forth between natural outcroppings and paths to factory floors and assembly rooms. The natural inhabitants of this world, wiggly and slimy space aliens, and the robot drones that were left here for some reason. And there are random item pickups along the way. You can grab special items that help you along and do other things. Things like scopes to help aim, ammo upgrades, things like that. And then there are a ton of weapons that you can pick up. There are some really crazy and interesting guns, some mixing the natural world with the mechanical. This game is fun, a good time suck. Falling into the trap of wanting to keep playing until you die, getting to a checkpoint where you could save and exit and come back later, or you could keep pushing forward and further into the game until finally you're forced to stop by probably something that throws you off your whole weapon layout. In my last run, I was jamming for a good hour and a half, making steady progress all the way to the first major boss. And then after I beat him, the game gave me some weird AI drone thing that gave me a shield. And every time I tried to shoot something, it would fire off my shot some other direction and not hit even close to where I was actually wanting the shot to go. This game really frustrated me after that. A lot of this game is run and gun, and if I have to slow down my gunning, they're just going to catch up and kill me. I was placed on a small platform and had about five different bots mobbing after me, and it was in that moment the game just ended my run. Incredibly frustrating. This sort of leads me into my biggest gripe about this game, is that it's all randomly generated, so the items you run into are sometimes not the greatest help. There can be runs where you have the same base level guns for almost five levels and nothing new comes your way. There are times for sure that you may find big giant guns right off the bat, but that still doesn't help you when you're on a level where you've got nothing but your base pistol. Might as well just throw yourself off the map and call it there. The game is fun. I feel like most of the challenge is left to luck and time commitment. Like you can probably beat the game, but it's gonna take a lot of time and a good run to get you there. Okay, well yeah, this coming from someone who was like, yeah, well don't stop for the clearly laid out save and exit spots. You're just gonna keep going until you die. All right, well don't listen to me, but listen to what I'm saying. Anyway, the game has a quick pace to it. The character moves quickly. I mean, unless you get unlucky to have some serious speed debuffs, the enemies come after you hot and fast after the first level. And since the maps are always changing, there are always new things to go hunt and find on the map as you make your way towards the exit of a level. I find myself coming to realize that I have a love-hate feeling towards roguelikes. They're a mixed bag of sorts. There are some that really get me going with their interesting playstyle and story that pull me in. And then there are those that feel like you're doing the same things over and over again. This game has just a touch of the over and over feeling. Making your character better and better every genome sequence is something, but there are only so many times that you can just fiddle with numbers and then start over. I'm not knocking this game and saying that it's bad, but it is getting to a point where I need to start feeling like I'm making serious waves and really becoming a hardcore clone and start running through these levels quickly. Right now, it sort of feels like I'm just slow and weak, the same person I started off with. The recommendation I can give to this game is, if you bought a bundle that this game came in, definitely go check it out. It's a great game. It can keep you hooked for a couple of hours. If you have the cash and $20 isn't too much to spend on a game, then go for it. It's a good game. If money is tight though, chances are that it might come out in a bundle or a discount on Steam, and then pick it up. I highly recommend playing this game. If only for the simple mechanic of becoming mutated by weird DNA strands. What's another roguelike that you enjoyed or that I should check out? Let me know down below. In the meantime, I'm going to go find out if this me is the real me or another me from another time. And if I'm not the real me, then I'm going to go find the real me and take back my own life. Uh, you, you all just do the YouTube dance. Like, sub, bell, comment. Let me know what you think. This has been Mummified Games. A reminder, keep digging my friends and we'll make it out sometime. See you in the next one.